we're going to discuss dispersion and waves. Now if we start with the standard wave equation um, which we would write as d2 psi by dx squared um, is equal to 1 over c squared d2 psi by dt squared um, and remember that if you can't figure out which side the c should be you can just use dimensional analysis to make sure it's on the right side. Now with this standard equation um, there are only second derivatives Okay, now that may seem obvious, but whenever you study a real system, um, you go much further than that. Um, so there's only second derivatives in this wave equation. And so when we substitute in, um, psi is equal to ae to the i kx minus omega t, um, then we find the following. We find that actually you end up with k squared is equal to omega squared over c squared. Um, I've missed out a couple of steps there. So when you differentiate psi twice, you get a factor with respect to x, you get a factor of minus k squared. When you differentiate twice with respect to t, you get a factor of minus omega squared. You do, of course, keep um, the a and then the exponential, but we can cancel that on both sides because those are not interesting. So we end up with um, this relationship, which you can also write as omega squared is equal to k squared c squared. Um, which I think I'll put in a red box because it's rather important. Um, and this is known as the dispersion relation. Um, the link between the angular frequency and the wave number or wave vector is the dispersion relation. And we can always get this by solving the wave equation. Um, and it's the relationship between angular frequency for speed and wave vector. Now, in real systems, of course, um, this is not actually what happens. So in real systems, we actually quite often have other terms. So um, what other terms might we have? Um, well, we would have something like um, we could have, for instance, um, a minus b deep psi by dt. That's a damping term. Um, or you can quite often have a, a, sorry, a d to the fourth psi, let's say by dx to the fourth, um, which just says that you've got a system which is anharmonic. Um, it means it's not a simple harmonic system. That's rather common. Um, and so what we end up with is we, we have a, so we have a more, we have a nonlinear dispersion relation for this kind of system. Um, so not, it's not a simple relationship between omega and k. And you've seen examples of this, um, particularly for water waves um, and systems where you have anharmonicity, um, and we call this dispersive behavior. Um, and if you have a system where it's non-dispersive, um, that just means you've got the simple relationship between omega and k that we see on the left-hand side highlighted in red. Um, examples of that would be electromagnetic waves in a vacuum and particular forms of water waves. Now what can we do with this? Um, well what we have to do is we now have to think carefully about um, the velocities of the waves. So there are two key velocities that we have to think about um, and these are important when we think about waves which are made up of different frequencies. Um, so we have the phase velocity uh, which is generally written as Vp um, and that's defined as omega divided by k. Um, and this is the velocity of points which have constant phase. And if you look up at the form of um, the plane wave that we put in up above, you can see why that might be the phase velocity. We also have group velocity, Vg, um, and that's d omega by dk, and that's the velocity of points of constant amplitude. Uh, so if we have a wave packet, um, so let's say we've got a little wave packet whose amplitude looks like this, and so actually what we've got, um, if I just change colour briefly, let me put this in yellow, um, we're going to end up with a wave that probably does something like this, that's not a very good drawing, but I think you get the idea, um, then the group velocity will move um, at the speed, will be the speed at which the peak of the wave moves, that's Vg, 
uh, the peak of the envelope, the amplitude, whereas the phase velocity will be the speed at which the points of constant phase, so for instance the minimum there that I've just highlighted, moves at. Um, and group velocity is the speed or velocity of energy and information. Um, that's a rather important point to understand. Of course, if you have a non-dispersive system, um, these two are identical. It's only when you have a dispersive system uh, that these matter. So the basic principle is that from the we have the wave equation, uh, which gives us the dispersion relation <laughs> simply by substituting in a plane wave, um, and then the dispersion relation gives us the velocities, the group and the phase velocities. Now in terms of practical applications, um, there are many examples that you can find out there. Frequently we look at waves on with water where there's a rather complex um, dispersion relation. Quite often the dispersion relations you see will contain physical parameters, for instance the depth of the water. Um, those are important and determine how it works, but they're not related to x and t. Um, they're just there to characterize the environment that we're in. Um, so there we have a brief overview of dispersion. The key things to take away from it are the fact that the dispersion relation itself is the relationship between omega, the wave, the wave at the angular frequency, sorry, and k, the wave vector. Um, that's the dispersion relation. Um, you have the two velocities, the phase velocity, which is just omega over k. Um, you might like to remember that by thinking about the form of the phase itself, the phase being kx minus omega t. Um, so it should be fairly clear what velocity that moves at. And the group velocity, which is the differential of omega with respect to k. Uh, once you've got those points well memorized and well understood, you should be able to understand the rest of dispersion.